Hey, what's up, everybody? I hope you're doing well. I wanted to walk you through a project that I've been working on recently, and specifically, I want to talk about the dynamics portion of it. So you can see that we have these bricks laying on the ground, and they get sort of popped up, and they get thrown around by this make noise text as it comes up. And then as we get to the end of this animation, you're going to start seeing some bricks falling down as this animation starts to get a little bit more hectic. So they'll start falling from the ceiling. Um, and I'm going to bring this into After Effects and add camera shake and flicker and all that kind of stuff. But um, you can see all these bricks falling down from the ceiling. So I wanted to talk to you about the dynamics portion and especially this little tab at the end of your dynamics tag, which is called the cache tab. Now this cache tab is something that I ignored for a long time when I was starting out in Cinema 4D, but it's incredibly uh, useful and you really should be using this all the time in your workflow. And I'm going to go ahead and show you why. So if we go ahead to the beginning, we have our bricks laid out on the ground here. And what we have on our bricks, it's just a cloner right here with a cube inside. And we have a uh, dynamics body, a rigid body tag. And under, let's see here, uh, dynamics, what we have under the trigger is on collision. So if this was set to its default immediately, it would just sort of fall down. But we wanted to wait until something collides into it. And that's when we have that text popping up through the ground. And the text has a collider body tag on it. So that's what's going to set off the, um, the dynamics right here. Now, if you notice, we scrub through this. Um, a lot of weird stuff is happening. Um, you're not getting a response of the dynamics unless you go really slow. If you scrub through it, it's acting really weird. That's because this is not cached. So you have to go to the beginning and then hit play and then wait to actually see it. But if you want to scrub through it, um, you're kind of screwed. So that's where your caching tab comes in handy. And this is just one of the reasons you should cache objects. Um, Another reason is that if you render something um, with an image sequence and it gets stopped in the middle, you have to restart your computer or it crashes and you pick up the render a little bit uh, later on, you're going to have a glitch in the dynamics because it's recalculating in the middle of the render and it's probably going to do something a little bit unexpected. Another reason is if you're using team render or having uh, multiple machines render it, um, if um, objects are not baked, you're going to have really strange results. A third reason is that if you view something in your viewport, and you think it looks great and then you go to render it, a lot of times it's going to render a little bit differently. The dynamics will be calculated a little bit differently and that could really screw up your render. Um, and people get very frustrated because what they see in here is not what they see in the render. So all of these reasons uh, combined mean that you should be caching your dynamic simulations all of the time. So here's what we're going to do. If we click on our tag, uh, on the cloner, we have this tag, we'll click on it. We have the options on the left, bake object and clear object, and then we have the ones on the right. Uh, the ones on the right are global. So it means if we hit bake all, it's gonna bake every single tag in this entire scene, and it's gonna clear the cache for the entire scene. Or if we use the ones on the left, it will just bake the object that you have uh, selected. Another way to do it globally is to hit Command D and you're going to get to your project settings. And here's just another side note. If you're getting weird results, uh, so it looks different in your viewport than your render, another thing that you might want to check is your frames per second. Make sure that whatever it is in your project settings by hitting Command D, make sure that in your render settings, if we go to output, it's also at that 30 frames per second or whatever it is. Make sure they're the same. Otherwise, your dynamics will look different. Um, but if you hit Command D and you go to your Dynamics tab, you have this Cache tab. And this is that global caching system again. You can bake or clear the cache for the entire scene. But if you don't want to go to your, um, your project settings, you can do that on the tag just with these guys right here. So let me show you the bake object. If you click it, you'll notice that it's incredibly fast. So it may be 10 seconds and you are done with your simulation. And then you'll notice that your icon right here changes. That means that it's cached. What this means is now we can scrub through it. We can render each frame. We can you know, know exactly what's happening if we scrub through it. We can uh, work on our lighting for a specific frame and we know exactly what it's going to look like. And then if we render, it's also going to be exactly what we see here and there will not be any uh, changes or surprises. So that is um, how you bake your object. And then if you are not happy with your simulation, um, what you can do is just clear the object cache, make some changes and then bake it again. All right, so let's jump to the end of the scene um, where I had all those bricks falling from the ceiling. Now, the way I set this up is really simple. It's just taking a cube 
and I have two keyframes and it's literally just going through those bricks. And the cube has a collider body tag, just like the text did on the bottom. And as it hits each individual brick, it's gonna initiate the uh, collision and they're gonna kind of break off and go down. But again, you can see that if we scrub, we're getting some really weird stuff happening and it's obviously not baked and we can't really see what's going on. So that's where this global bake all is gonna come in handy because I have a bunch of different dynamic uh, simulations going on. If we just hit bake all, again, no reason to be scared of using baking in your workflow because it's incredibly fast. And just like that, it's all done and we can see exactly what's happening. It's gonna speed up your, your playthrough of your viewport because it's all cached in there. So you can see exactly what's happening and uh, you can scrub through it. It's gonna look exactly the same when you render. So that is basically my quick tip, a long story to tell you, use your cache tab, bake your objects always. And um, also if you're using cloth, make sure to bake those also. Make this cache tab your friend it will uh, dramatically improve your workflow. Remember, wake and bake, folks. Wake and bake. We'll talk to you next time.